for being here tonight and joining us with our worship time and then to hear his word. And for those who've joined us online, I want to thank you as well. And again, I pray that our hearts will be challenged in our walk with him as we hear what he has for us tonight. And before I share what he's put on my heart, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for another opportunity I have to share your word. And I just pray, Lord, that it will minister to our hearts, it will challenge us and draw us unto yourself. So I pray that you would open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive, Lord. And I thank you for all that will be accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. If I was to title the message tonight, it would be, Lean on God and His Word lean on God and his word. And we're going to start off with John chapter 6, looking at verses 1 through 13. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and I saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will that go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There were plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were seated. As much as they wanted, he did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. What we see here is his disciples were focused on what they didn't have versus what they had. They were focused on what they didn't have. Look at John 6. We're going to look at verses 7 through 9. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year wages to buy enough bread for one uh, one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will that go among so many? Not enough food, not enough money. That's what they were focused on, instead of who they had there with them, a miracle-working God standing right in front of them, a miracle-working God. And I I will tell you, well, let's take a look at verses 11 through 13. It says, Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had, had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled the 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. I want to remind you that these disciples, these same disciples, had seen Jesus perform miracles before this. They had seen him do it. But they were not focused on that. They, were, they actually did not expect to see a miracle that day, as if they had forgotten what God could do or what Jesus could do right there in front of them. And so they were not expecting it. But verse 6-6 six, six says, He asked them only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. He already knew what he was going to do. He already had it in mind. And I want to remind you, in our lives, Jesus already knows what he's going to do in our situations. He already knows. He's just wanting us to lean on him and trust him. He's And to, to look at his word, he wants us to expect a miracle. In our situations, whatever they might be, he's wanting us to look to him and expect that miracle in our lives. In Matthew 6, verses 25 and 26, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what what you will wear. Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? 
The Lord takes care of them. God cares for the sparrows, the littlest birds God cares for. The birds don't ever have to worry about where they're going to get their food. The Lord provides for them. He feeds them every day. And the sparrows, they, we are worth more than the sparrows. We are more valuable to him. God cares for us. He cares about what we're going through. The Lord watches over the sparrow, and with love and concern, he watches over you and me with love and concern about what is going on in our lives. The birds are fed by your heavenly Father, and they don't worry about how they're going to get them. How much more can we trust him? in our lives because we're much more value. But we must lean on him and his word. We sing this song tonight, leaning on the everlasting arms. That is what he's wanting us to do. I want us to think of King David. He totally trusted the Lord to guide and direct him as he led Israel as their king. In fact, he, he many times he inquired of God. He went and inquired of him, can we go do this? Can we go do that? He didn't do anything without the Lord in, in his direction. He made mistakes. Yes, he did when he took things in his own hands. He made some mistakes, and he paid the price for those mistakes. But I want to tell you, David was very repentive when he realized the mistakes that he made. And it wasn't like, oh, well, he was repentive. He went before the Lord with a, a very heavy heart of what he did. He knew he needed the Lord's wisdom and guidance to lead Israel. He knew that. So when he died, his son Solomon became king, and he was overcome with the weight of the responsibility. So let's take a look at what Solomon asked God. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 through 12. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, You have shown great kindness to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed, for you have made me king over a people who are as num numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people for who is able to govern this great people of yours. God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possessions, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you, and I will also give you wealth, possessions, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had and none after you will have. Solomon was granted that wisdom and knowledge and much more because he knew he had to lean on God. He knew that that's where the wisdom was going to come for. We, too, must lean on the Lord. And initially, specifically, and personally, Ask the Lord for the Lord's counsel in our lives. We need to lean on him. Look at James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. He gives wisdom without finding fault. This involves making right choices and doing right things. That's what it involves, according to both God's will and what's revealed in his word and the leading of the Spirit. We need that in our lives. And I've said many times, Lord, if you could give me a quarter of Solomon's wisdom, I'll be a happy camper. I really would be because of his wisdom was so great that they came from all over to, to question him and see. And so I told the Lord, if you just give me a quarter of it, I'll, I'll be a happy camper with that. And I know the Lord has because when I'm speaking with some and counseling with some things, I'll drop in my heart and I know that's from God, that he's given me some things to share and, and to them. So Am Graham Lotz, she wrote, the best advisor, the best business manager, the best life coach is God himself. That's what she wrote, and I will continue on. He is readily available 24-7 without charge. He doesn't charge. 
And if we want to live our very best lives, we cannot go on our very own way, follow our own logic, or somehow conclude we know best. If we follow the Spirit's leading, there is no reason to think we'll end up with less than we, if we do it our way, or that getting what we want will make us happier than what He wants, or we don't need Him for every direction. She says, do you need direction, discernment, deliverance? Talk to your counselor. Pour out your heart. Be honest, transparent. Lean hard on the one who is Jesus in you. Lean hard on him. So don't just take things in, in your own way, but ask the Lord. Get direction and guidance from him. In Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2, it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The God who created the heavens and the earth takes time to watch over and care for all of those who trust him and his word. We don't make decisions on our own feelings. We go to the Lord and we ask him, Lord, what would you have me to do? How would you, you guide me? I, I have to tell you, I have heard many times how people have asked the Lord on business decisions and the Lord has granted them their answer. And he's, he's in, in their life decisions, he's told them what to do. He's given me answers on some things I had to have. He does that. He is the God of all knowledge. He knows best. We, but we must trust him with all our heart. We must trust him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is very familiar. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Our own understanding is limited, fallible, and subject to error. That's our, under, our own understanding. We need to be enlightened by God's word and by the, being led by the Holy Spirit rather than um, relying on our own judgment. We must pray for God's wisdom and his will in our life. And I'm reminded of a true story that I, I read about a pilot. He had a small airplane, and, he, and it was actually a, a very new plane. And so he, he decided to take a couple of people with him at night. And there was nothing but water below. And this is a, a new plane, so he doesn't know it real well. And he had no landmarks to see. And the weather and the light con, uh, conditions were, were bad. It was such that all the basic landmarks that he would have been able to see were obscured. And he became disoriented. He couldn't tell what was up and what was down. But his inner ear tricked him. Our inner ear has that little balance in it. And it tricked him into thinking that he was level. When in fact, he was beginning a nosedive. By the time he realized he was in trouble, it was too late. He and his passengers crashed and they perished. So I'd ask, how many know what an altimeter is? It is an instrument on board a small aircraft. It determines a plane's elevation, its height above sea level. It's, it can sense pressures changes that accompany changes in the altitude. The pilot was never trained to read his aircraft altimeter. He wasn't trained. So he leaned on his own understanding, relying on his own instincts. And when his inner ear whispered, you are level, the altimeter read, you're going down. It was the instrument that was correct because he acted according to where he thought and perceived rather than trusting the object, objective truth provided a reliable source. He lost his life and those who depended on him. They say this crash could have been prevented if he had been trained on the altimeter. And I got to thinking about that. I started thinking as I read this story, how the Bible has been provided for us. It's been provided for us to give us wisdom and guidance in our everyday life and to show us what God provided to us through his son and all that's included. I got to thinking about that. 
But so many people do not read his word. They do not read it. And it's the, the moment for life situations and eternal life. It's what it provides for us in all our situations and eternal life as well. God has given us an access to him through his son. And the Bible tells us that. There are many times that I talk to people and I'll say, do you read the word? Have you read that part? And they'll say, no. And I'll say, you need to read the word. But I can't tell you how many people do not read the word. Even Christians today do not read his word. And so many miss out because they don't read. And things in life could be avoided if they took the time to read his word and get direction. It could be provided. I know my mom spoke to me a, a, a while ago about a survey that was taken about how many people read the, the Bible Christian-wise and minister-wise, and we were shocked about how many don't. Even ministers, they don't read the Word. And I, it breaks my heart. We don't always understand why things happen. We don't always understand or know what really is best for us in the long term. We think we do, but we always don't always know. We may not always know, but God knows best. He knows best in our life. He sees the bigger picture. He is the best one to lead us. By following God's leading, we can be sure we are on the right path. It may not be easy, and sometimes we may not want to do it. And we say, oh, no, Lord, no, thank you. But that's the path in which he, he has us on. But we can be sure it is the right path that will lead us in the right direction if we go according to his understanding, his knowledge. He knows what's best. A lot of times we think we do, but he really does. There is a, a line in a poem that goes like this. The more I lean upon him, the more I learn his power and find his grace is sufficient to meet life's every hour. And that's it right there. The more we lean on him, the more we realize who he is in our life and that he can meet every life's hour. As you lean on Jesus, rest in him, trust him, and obey his voice. Depend on him for guidance strength and direction and inspiration. Depend on him. He will show you exactly what you need to do. He will show you. And I've said before, I remember when everybody was in my work, everybody was having to turn out their resume, but the Lord told me, do not send your resume out. And everybody thought I was crazy, that I wasn't sending my resume out because they were shutting the doors, they were closing that business. But God told me not to. And so a little few weeks later, the president of another company came, of the sister company, and said, we would like you to come work for us. I didn't have to send out my resume. God already knew what he had planned to do. And it's in every one of our lives. He knows what he has planned for us. We just have to obey him and listen to him and step out. And sometimes he has to step out in, in things that people think you're crazy. But that's okay. If God has told you, step out and do it. Don't, don't worry about the end results. God will take care of it. We just need to know that we've heard from him and he is moving us forward. And once we do that, it's all in his hands. We're just obedient. Remember, we are to trust the Lord completely. We, with every part of who we are, we trust him with every part. And like I said, sometimes we don't like it, but we trust him. We are to trust his wisdom, his truth, his ways, not ours. We are to trust his truth, his wisdom, and his ways, and not ours. And I pray that you will lean on God and his word. In all circumstances, you will lean on God and his word and see what he has for you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this opportunity I've had to share your word. And I pray, Lord, that these here and those listening online, 
if they haven't made that commitment to read your word every day, that they will do so. Because in your word is truth, wisdom, guidance for our lives, Lord. And it, it speaks to us that when we're off the, the path, it will put us back on where we should be. So I pray, Lord, that we will be diligent about reading your word and going forward in the directions that you have us to go. And anything, Lord, that is accomplished through this that I've spoken, Lord, we will give you the praise and glory because it is through you that all things are done. So we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we stand and we'll be dismissed.